Simplify your workflow even more and take control of Traction Waveform with this fairly affordable little DAW controller right here. This is the Korg Nano Control 2. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set this up in Traction Waveform. It's really easy to do. I've included a link to this down in the description in case you want to get any more information on it and the latest pricing. I've also included a link to a review video that I did of it. But right now, let's jump in and get this thing set up in Waveform. Form. All right, so if you have yours connected already, disconnect it. And then what you want to do is hold down set and the record button at the same time and plug in the USB cable. And this puts the Nano Control 2 into a mode that is usable in waveform. So once you have that open like that, we can open up Traction Waveform. And you want to go into your settings then go down to MIDI devices and you'll see nano control here in an output and input. So we want to just click here it's enabled and click there. So you want input and output enabled. And now what we want to do is go to control surfaces and then in control surfaces, you want to go to Mackie control universal and then click on that. Then down in the bottom section here, you want to go to input device and you'll select nano control two. And then you go to output device, nano control two. You also want to make sure that the one button record is clicked. And then you can also set this color here if you really want to. And this just sort of changes the color that's going to go around the tracks that are being controlled. I'll show you that in a second here. So this is all set up let's go into a project and what I'm going to do is open up an existing project for now. So you can see around the tracks, there's this green angle thing here, and that's the color that I was talking about back in the settings. And if we changed it to say pink, you can see it's now pink in there. So put it to whatever color you like. It doesn't really matter, but it does show you which tracks are being controlled because if you have a lot more than eight tracks, which this controls. Let's add eight more tracks. So you can see it only controls this section of tracks. Now, if we want to control some more tracks down here, we would just press the track arrow to the right. And you can see now it's controlling the next section of tracks. And then we can go back just like that. And another thing you'll notice is if we open this up and say this track was soloed, it would actually show up as soloed on the nano control. So you can see the light is on there for soloed on track one. And if we press it on here, it turns it on and off. Same with mute. And if we wanted to arm this for recording, you can see it's armed for recording. And of course your play button works. stop button. And if you wanted to go forward, you could use these forward and backwards arrows here. And you can also use this markers button here. And I think if we had some markers in there, it would jump between the markers, but we don't have any. The set button doesn't work to set markers in waveform. Now, another thing to note is this doesn't have motorized faders. So if you were loading this into an existing project and you can see here on track two, the volume is lowered already. We'll just touch that. So you can see here that the volume of this track is at minus 11.68 and the fader is down at the bottom here. And if I were to touch this fader, no matter where it is, it's going to adjust the volume so it matches the fader. But in terms of simplifying your workflow, when I record guitar, I like to have this towards the end of my desk because I like to stand up while I play and I can easily arm a track for recording, then press record. So we'll, we'll do that right now. I don't have anything to record in, but I'll just set this so it's recording input one, we'll say. All right. And we'll just arm track six for recording. And I'll press record now. All 
and you can see it started to record. And you can also see we have controls for pan at the top here. So if I wanted to control the pan for this track, if I just turn it a little bit, you can see we're adjusting the pan. And you can set this up to control other things as well. But right now, this is set up as a control surface. And as you can see, if you use this as a control surface like I do, you can change settings on multiple tracks at the same time without needing to use your mouse. And I like the transport buttons because I like to stand when I record and typically standing back from the computer. So this allows me to have like a remote control for my DAW, which is really nice. Now, if you want to check out even more Traction Waveform tutorials, click the video on the screen right now or click the one under it to see what YouTube recommends. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating and we'll talk soon.